Hello, let's work through the example where we are asked to find if the function, which looks super weird, has a derivative at zero. This is what we call a piecewise function because it is created out of pieces. So usually I explain it this way. There is a piece I'm going to call one and a piece I'm going to call two. And the piecewise functions can be explained like so. I can see there's a break at zero when x is zero. So I'm going to put a zero on this illustrational number line. And when x is zero, then equation two happens. You see, x is zero, look here. Here, f of x equals zero. So that's how you should read it. When x is not zero, so everything on the left from zero and on the right from zero, you should look over here and the function is x times sine of minus one over x. That's equation number one. So number one happens before and after zero, but at zero, it is zero. And that's how you can explain piecewise functions. And we are asked if the derivative of zero exists. Well, the definition of the derivative says that to check if the derivative exists at a, you need to check the limit f of h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero exists. So does this limit exist or not? That's the idea. Change in output over change in input when the input shrinks to zero. That's sometimes you can see it this way. So our a is zero because we are asked to check the derivative at zero. Then let's check if this limit exists or not. This is the limit we need to talk about. So we need to find f at h. And you, I think, was practicing this already, how to find f of h. Basically, you just plug h in your function everywhere you see your input. In this case, we have x. Usually, I write down a denominator right away. Don't touch it. f of h will be, since f of x is x times sine of one, uh, minus 1 over x, now it's going to be h times sine of minus 1 over h, right? Everywhere I see x, I just plug h. Minus f at 0. What is f at 0? You can say, well, I don't know because I have division by 0 over here and multiplication by 0 over here. No, 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 don't forget. This is a piecewise function. When we're talking about x equals 0, we're looking at equation number 2. Here is my number line. It tells you what to do at 0. You look at equation number 2. Equation number two tells you that f of x is actually zero at zero. So this part is zero. Simplify. I will have a limit. h goes to zero. h sine minus one over h all over h. Since x does not equal h but approaches a. Uh, since h does not equal 0, but approaches 0, this is limit, right? It can approach as close as we want, but it never reaches. Then I can cancel out h, because as you remember, you can't cancel out zeros. Then I'm working with the limit. h goes to 0 of sine minus 1 over h. And since I'm having division by 0, here, as you can see, minus 1 over h, as h approaches 0, uh, does not have a finite limit here, so I can even write down for continuous functions, you can actually put a uh, limit inside and see what is... No, actually, you're not supposed to do this step right away. You're supposed to actually conclude over here, I would say it this way. You're supposed to conclude right away that since h is over here in the denominator and h in the denominator shrinks to zero, I have division by the smallest number we know that gives you the biggest number we know and sine at infinity does not have a finite limit. It keep oscillating, right, forever. No matter how far we go, at infinity it will be keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. So I will say d and e does not exist. So this limit that defines a derivative at zero does not exist. Then derivative does not exist. So determine whether or not f prime at zero exists. The answer is nope. The answer. Why? We justify it by the definition. It's, it's, the limit does not exist. Here's the graph for you. I found the graph. I plotted the graph for you of this function. 
So the limit exists, as you can see. The limit at zero is zero. The function is keep uh, um, wiggling, if you want to see this with oscillating, but wiggling up and down, up and down. But at some point it shrinks to zero, so limit exists. But um, this particular limit does not exist. And this is not just some kind of limit. This is the limiting of position of the secant line, if you remember that. Derivative is a limiting position of secant line. The secant line, basically the tangent, keep jumping too much, so it cannot stay, it cannot be fixed. And that is why there is no finite limit. And that is why derivative does not exist. Even if I zoom out, it still does not gonna work out. So there is no derivative at zero. Okay, one more example. One more function over here. In this case, it looks kind of the same, right? It's still sine. Now it's 1 over x, but the most important part, it's multiplied by x squared this time. So maybe it will change something because now the exponent of x is higher. So it's kind of curious what's going to happen. But the beginning is the same. You need to check the... So let me write down. If they ask us about the derivative at 0, that means they ask us to check this limit. The denominator shrinks to zero. Then a function at the h, that my change in x, minus at the point a, my a is zero. Plug in, like we did last time, f of h will be 3h squared, because it's 3x squared, sine 1 over x becomes sine 1 over h minus f at 0 same idea we look at the equation number 2 when x is 0 the answer is 0 so that one is 0 again simplifying limit i will have 3h squared sine 1 over h all over h since h goes to 0 but never reaches 0, I can cancel it out. And then I will have a limit. h shrinks to 0. And I have 3. I don't need a fraction anymore. 3h sine 1 over h. Okay, what is that? So what is the limit of this function? Equals question mark. To figure out this limit, we're going to use a squeezy theorem. Squeezy theorem. You just learned it in this chapter. Squeeze theorem, squeezy theorem. Americans call it sandwich theorem because Americans like sandwiches. And then in Ukrainian and Russian culture, we call it uh, two policemen and a drunken guy theorem because we say that uh, when I have a function, and in this case, it is 3h sine of 1 over h. This is the function I want to know. Where does it go as h approaches 0? That's my drunken guy. The two policemen approach the drunken guy from both sides. They take the drunken guy by a hand and then wherever they both gonna go, the drunken guy have no choice but to go the same direction. So that's how we teach it, so which is kind of supporting the stereotype of drinking uh, culture, but uh, which is not good. So don't think that we are people drink a lot of alcohol in Europe. But still, that's the funny thing we usually tell about squeezy theory. Or Americans learn it as a sandwich theory because the functions on the two sides they sandwich the function in the middle. So how should I sandwich that? Maybe you remember that, and hopefully you do, that sines and cosines of any angle theta are bounded by so i can put even equal minus one and one if you remember sines and cosines they like they look like waves which go up and down up and down forever but those waves are actually bounded in the tunnel here it is so they cannot jump into like minus seven and plus ten they're always between minus 1 and 1, unless they multiply by some number, like 3, then it's going to be from minus 3 to 3. So, using this information, I actually can take this sign and approximate it or bound it by plus 1 on the right and minus 1 on the left, right? Because it's exactly what I just did at the top. 
and then just copy these 3H parts, 3H, 3H. So on the left now I have minus 3H, and on the right I have 3H, and those two functions by bounding the middle function. So they like two policemen uh, holding a drunken guy. So where do they go as H approaches zero? As H approaches zero, right? I will put it like so in the middle. As H approaches zero, function on the left is minus 3H. Where does it go? To zero, right? Shrinks to zero. 3H times one, where does this go? To zero, right? Then the middle function has no choice but to follow them. And it goes to zero. That's why we call it squeeze theorem because it's squeezed, the middle function squeezed by uh, two functions on sides. And I will say, I would say thus. So that's the middle part is the result of the side parts. So this piece over here actually has a finite limit and it is zero by by the squeezy theorem. So since limit exists and it's finite, what's the answer of the question? A derivative at zero exists because the limit exists. So in this case, it's yes. And here's the graph for you. Look at that. What is the difference between the graph we had before? It still wiggles like crazy and then shrinks to zero, but this time it does it faster. And at some point it becomes a line here. So the derivative is zero. As you can see, it becomes flat. The previous function was wiggling forever. And that's why the derivative, the tangent, could not be fixed. Here, it seems like it is fixed. It wiggles only a little bit and then becomes flat and then start wiggling again. So where it is flat, the derivative is zero. As you remember, derivative means slope or steepness of the line. So what is the steepness of the flat surface? Zero. So the derivative at zero exists and it is zero. Pretty cool. Well, now hopefully you have clear understanding of this problem and practice more with limits. Two, feel more confident about limits. Soon you will learn how to find the derivatives like piece of cake. And you will see what is the derivative of each function in five microseconds. See you in my next video.